Hi everybody, welcome to Reality Buzz TV where we talk about all things reality TV shows and all things reality TV show stars. So today you guys, I want to do the review of episode 4 of Married at First Sight, Sansi. Okay, now you guys, it's been some time. Everybody is back from uh, their honeymoons. They're back at the apartments that have been given to them to spend the I believe it's 90 days uh, together before they decide decide or they make their final decision on whether they want to stay to get continue to stay together as a married couple so now uh, of course now they're there every day with each other if they have to go to work they go to work they come back so it's, it's kind of like a real couple real married couple okay now uh let me talk about each of the couples of course you guys uh, my favorite is still kuso and d but i feel like they're getting along and it feels like it's easier for them to live together because we don't see them fight about uh, maybe the chores in the house and all of that when we see them we see them just uh, enjoying each other's space okay and also I feel like they are I think even Kuto mentioned it I think they are attracted to each other so even when they are sitting uh, at their lounge you can see that you know these are people that like being together okay because they're usually very close and all touchy and all of that and uh, D, you guys, looks very, 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 very happy. I think Kuso is happy as well because when he was meeting with the guys, he did say that he was happy. But I think that for him, um, he's just a laid back guy, so it's hard to rate, you know, it's, it's hard to rate him. But I feel like they are both uh, happy. And they had this game that they. Um, the experts had sent to each of the couples to play okay I'm only going to talk about the questions that I thought were interesting the way that each of the couples answered them okay I feel like uh, Kuso and D have an issue of D having a male uh, work based thing okay because remember when they were doing uh, that uh, couples dinner the reunion dinner uh, Kuso had raised it, uh, the thing of he has an issue with uh, male besties and I feel like he raised it because I think that's what's going on with D. There's somebody that D is very close to that D works with and apparently D has even gone to lunch with this person and Kuso is just not for that. So the question that they, they were, because uh, they had to pick a question asked and then they both had to answer was the question about what you consider uh, chilling, cheating. <laughs> so what do you consider cheating in a relationship? Okay. The way that Kuzo uh, explained it, and I do think that this is something that might cause problem in their relationship if D doesn't pay attention to it and fix it. Because he made an example to so say, let's say that I work with this girl and then outside of work, I tell you that I'm going out to lunch with her. And D was like, but why would you want to spend uh, or have lunch with somebody that you work with? Why is that needed? And he was like, but, you know, that is exactly how uh, I feel, you know, about the situation. So I think she needs to take care of that situation. I think that... I mean, if the relationship with Kuso is important to her, then she has to make some adjustment as far as that relationship is concerned. Because I do think that Kuso is very uncomfortable with the presence of this person in their life. And uh, if she doesn't change it, it might just affect their relationship. But overall, you guys, I'm happy with what I'm seeing with Kuso and D. I think that they're happy. Uh, but next week we are going to be seeing uh, Odi asking Kuto when he is going to be, when she is going to be meeting his daughter because both of them have kids. And I'm wondering if 
Kuto has met uh, this uh, child because she's going to be asking why she will be meeting his uh, daughter. It doesn't look in the uh, preview, it doesn't look like he's having a good reaction to that. I don't know, you guys, but I guess we'll see next week. And I do think that it's time because if after the 90 days you are going to make a decision whether you, you stay with this person or you move forward, then you need to know, you need to meet the child. Um, I think that if I'm the one that is a parent, I want to see how they interact with the child and how my child also feels about the person. Are they comfortable around this person before I make a decision on whether I stay in this relationship long term? So I think that they definitely do need to make arrangements to, to meet each other's uh, children, okay? Now, uh, with families, you guys, we haven't seen any of them really meet families ever since they uh, got married, okay? I think they last saw families at the wedding unless they are not showing us because they are not shooting every day. It doesn't look like they're shooting every, every single day and every single hour. So I still feel good about Kuso, but I want them to get into like serious practical stuff, um, when it comes to like married couples, I feel like they might possibly already be in love with each other. And it did worry me a little bit when the guys were having a, a sit down together because later on the the guys go out together and the girls do the same. And they were talking about uh, whether they, the guys were talking about whether they were happy when they saw their wives in terms of physical appearances. And uh, Kuso was the one that said, he really wanted a big ass, okay? And listen, from what I've seen, I mean, I think he does have some, but I don't think it is as big as Kuto was used to or was looking forward to. But I think that you guys, at the end of the day, I mean, really, if you really get a, a good uh, person as your wife, they, are, they love you, you are attracted to them, you really are having a good time. Okay, I, I hope that also when this is that she's not gonna feel insecure now in her relationship and feel like she's not what uh, Kuto was looking for because you know we don't want no more, more people now doing a BPL because their husband wants big bumps. Okay, you're seeing enough disastrous BPLs out here. <laughs> I wonder what you do so regret to go to Uncle Sam Zimbilis and Mabang Fagazon. Yeah, you guys. But to your value, the thing of physical appearance, I think it's everybody. Everybody has a preference when it comes to physical appearance. But uh, when uh, the relationship gets serious, it is less. It doesn't help you much that your husband is tall, dark, and handsome. You know, his brain. Uh, is what you need. His heart is what you need. Okay? <laughs> so sometimes tall, dark, and handsome, when it comes with nothing, it really doesn't help. If you had to choose between tall, dark, and handsome, and a good heart, uh, like a considerate, a considerate person, a respectful person, somebody that adores you, adores your child, I mean, is that even a choice? Okay? So now, we're back to Tabang and uh, Como, the, the couple that likes to uh, have some fun and likes to drink and uh, they're having most conversations while they are smoking hookah. And listen, I like the fact that they're young and they're living like young people. But I feel like Kutabang has some immaturity about him. Like it's almost like he's never met people um, that do things different from how he does things. I'm not understanding at his age that he doesn't know that there are people that uh, don't drink that much and there are people that can enjoy life without taking a drink. And some people just prefer not to do it for different reasons. Some people just... Uh, and uh, for somebody to say what it, she, uh, she, he was basically saying that they, he doesn't, he wouldn't want to hang out with Kuso and D because they don't drink. 
So what, what, what are they going to do with them? You can drink your alcohol and they can drink whatever and you can still have fun. I felt like it was an immature uh, thing to say, but he really is bothered by the fact that Kuto doesn't drink, you know? And I, I don't understand that, you guys. I don't get it, you know? Anyway, you guys, so Kuto, uh, Kumo had uh, cooked for Tabang because of course Tabang had expressed that he would like for her to cook more and he was saying that he is tired of eating it on bolo so I wondered you guys would see, is she making it on bolo every day it on bolo is not the easiest thing to make like for you to be making it every day I wonder there are people that eat it on bolo every day you know so it was like he's tired of it, don't follow. But he still ate it. I was just wondering about that. Okay. I, don't follow it's, it's something that you eat in a little longer. You know, money energy, which we call the flour, mix it, and whatever. But I guess now they are also amaretti made, what, what. But he really was just over it, don't follow. And uh, also they were talking about Kuto and D and talking about how he feels like uh, D is a snob. This is how I felt, you guys. I feel like Tabang has some attraction to D. I feel like that. And it comes off as him not liking her. I, f I, I do feel like if they were mixed up and uh, they had to choose for themselves, who would you choose? I kind of feel like there's some attraction between Tabang and Day. But because uh, he can never have her, then he, I just, I, I felt like that. I might just, I might be totally, totally off with that, but I felt like that. He's just way too bothered by uh, Udi uh, because they don't even spend that much time with them for him to be that bothered uh, about him. But I just feel like there's something weird about it, okay? Yeah. So now, Utabang no Makumo, what I'm noticing is that they're having conversations, but Tabang doesn't ha want to have serious conversations. He doesn't. Because, guys, if you're a black person and you're married, it's normal that the next conversation is going to be about Ilobolo, it's going to be about meeting the family. Because it's very difficult as a woman to come home and say, I'm married. Because the next time they're going, the next thing they're going to ask you, how are you married without a lobolo? So those are the conversations that I feel like Kumo wants to have. You know, a lobolo, what is going to be the plan? You know, are you going to do it? When are we going to be uh, doing it? And all of that. On the other hand, I feel like Tabang doesn't want to have those conversations. Like, Listen, it, it will happen when it happens. Why are you pushing it? I didn't even feel like uh, Kumo was pushing for Ilobola. I felt like Kumo is wanting to know what, and what is the plan. So I did not understand that, you guys. So Ukumo, no, no, Tabang did have a picnic uh, somewhere at some forest that freaked me out. I felt like I feel like I was you will come in and attack me or something. But it was a beautiful setting that they had done for them, uh, production had done for them because I guess they did not have uh, a honeymoon, okay? So then, uh, you know, I guess that Ukumo is trying to find out where Tami is as far as the feelings are concerned. He ended up saying that he really likes her and I guess you guys, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to, to uh, now after a few weeks be saying that you love somebody. I mean, that is the best that he can give. He said he liked her. So uh, listen, and then there were so the questions, they were talking about like the worst relationship that she's ever been in. And she was talking about uh, how she was in a relationship with somebody that did not have good personal hygiene. Listen, you guys, I thought that when they were talking about uh, worst relationships that they had been in, they were going to talk about... It, yeah, I understand the, the, the hygiene thing, but I just felt like that's all, you know? <laughs> 
you know. But yeah, again, they keep pointing out that they, they are very young. And, you know, I guess they talk, they're having these conversations as young people. But overall, you guys, I think they're getting along. I think they're able to communicate. But I do feel like uh, Makumo would probably like to have more conversations about serious things about the future, about how they're going to move forward. And Tabang is not wanting to have those conversations. So in order for them to get along, I, I, I see Kumo um, having to hold back when it comes to her pushing for those conversations to take place. So in order for them to get along, because Tabang even changes his demeanor when he doesn't want to talk about something. So I kind of feel like it's a challenge for them right now to have those serious conversations about what uh, in their future. Then you guys, we have um, Boitsepo and uh, Sebenzile, the gym guy. Everybody refers to Sebenzile as the gym guy. Okay. Listen, I don't know. I wasn't sure about them. I think even the cast is not sure about them. Even the cast is not sure. The others are, are, are feeling the same because when they were having a meeting with everybody, uh, like going out with the other uh, cast members, they said the same about Seven Zero that he presents everything as perfect. So I don't know if it's genuine or not, you guys. And maybe they haven't gone through a lot with uh, it's Sebo for them to be able to talk about stuff. Because Boy Sebo, on one hand, now nice, she's presenting this perfect picture, and now Seven Zero. So you don't know if it's um, if it's real. But maybe it is, okay. But the interesting thing about them when they were playing the game is that the question was, do you do you have feelings for your ex? And he answered yes. He answered yes. And apparently he has, okay, I guess he has an ex that he still has feelings for. But he says that, you know, Boitsepo doesn't have to worry about that because nothing would ever happen between them. But he also has somebody at work that he trains people with. So he has a, a female bestie at work. So I couldn't make up, you guys, whether the male, the, the female bestie that he is working with and training people with at work is the same person that he was saying he still have, has feelings for. Because I think that that makes a big difference. And uh, Boitsev was worried about it in terms of him saying he still has feelings for his ex. But I'm like, it's not a strange thing. But I feel like it's one of those things that sometimes when you care about the person, you can just lie and say, no, I absolutely don't have feelings for nobody. <laughs> Do you really have to tell them, especially when you know that it does, it's not going to sit well with them? Now, you guys, uh, but well, it's about seven zero. I guess you guys, I, I'm, I'm at a point where I feel like maybe I'm the one that doesn't understand them because I was just feeling like they're not real. But then I see their interaction and it looks like they are, they are being honest with each other. So maybe we are just not getting them. I think maybe this is the couple that is going to uh, surprise us. They are going to make it. And when we were, when we are not feeling like they're being real, because from what they say, they say that they're very happy with each other. Everything is perfect, and their intimacy, uh, intimacy is good. And so, yeah, you guys, I don't know. I guess we'll understand them as we move along. And then there's the interesting couple, uh, Tammy and Zitobile. I saw that Tammy and Zitobile did an interview here on YouTube. I ended up downloading it yesterday because I was still busy. I haven't watched it. And also, I didn't know if I want to watch it because I don't feel like it's a good idea to interview the couples while we are watching the show. Because I do feel like they've already, they did the show a while ago. And obviously, they already know if, you know, people around them already know if they've stayed together, they've decided to leave. I heard that even Tammy and Zitowila at some point did a live. But I feel like they're not supposed to do things like that because they spoiled the show for us. So I downloaded the interview. I don't know if I want to watch it 
because I feel like I want to watch it uh, on the show. You know, it spoils it when we already know they made it, they didn't make it, uh, you know. But I did, maybe when I have time, when I decide if I want to watch it or not, maybe I'll, I'll watch. But this is a couple of guys that is just like, you know, because uh, on one hand, Otami is that guy that doesn't want to do anything as far as um, housework in terms of you know, taking off his socks, he's that guy that wants you to even take off his socks, uh, uh, prepare his food, uh, iron for him, wash for him. When he's going somewhere, you are picking for him. He's that guy. He says he's just not going to do that. He is a man must. When they were having a meeting and they were saying, the guys were saying, you know, we, you can't expect women to do all of these things nowadays. You, you have to chip in. Because then if you do that, then if, if you don't chip in, then that thing of a man must is going to come up. Because then you're going to be like, okay, a man must provide. A man must do this. A man must do that. Are you going to be able to do that if you also are saying a woman must do that? I'm not going to do this because a woman must do it, which is a good point. But you know, he said he doesn't mind the a man mask situation. What I'm not understanding is that is that he was talking about uh, having a joint account with Zitobile. And I was like, but you are a man mask. Uh, you, you are a man mask, man. Meaning that you are saying Zitobile must take care of everything in the house. You will take care of the finances because that's what... You know, a man must situation is supposed to be like, but you are expecting that she will contribute her money here for you as a man to do the man must, but she must also do all of these things for you. It doesn't make sense, you know. Uh, the, nowadays, I just feel like people that don't want to adjust, you know, the, that thing of male, female. Uh, how are you going to live nowadays, okay? So I'm not going to... So my money is not going to go to the pool then because I have to take care of all these things in in the home and all of that as a woman and you are going to financially take care of us and my money is going to be just mine, okay? Are you going to be happy with that? So Ayotam is a difficult one, you guys. I think uh, they did a disservice to Toby matching her with Tammy. Plus, like I had said at the beginning, you guys, I did say Tammy was very clear that he wanted a woman with a flat stomach. And what he meant by that, honestly, for me, I feel like he means he wanted a skinny woman, okay? I feel like physically, you guys, there are things that you cannot be giving to a person. You, can, you cannot compromise for the person because the experts have to do the compromise for the person. I think if a person wants wanted a skinny person, give them a skinny person, but then look for those other things because then the 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 the, the physical is just always going to be on his face, you know, and it will affect the other person that you are putting in that situation. So I do think that they put Uzutobile in a really like difficult uh, place. Even when he was having a, a conversation with the other husbands, he was the one that brought up, guys, physically, are you happy with the appearance of your wives? And he was the one that was the most, uh, that expressed to go to know. I actually was very specific to say, I don't want a plus size woman. And there I was standing there uh, with the minister. And guess who comes? It's, you know. And I do think, you guys, he's tried to be more respectful about it, which is surprising for me because with Tammy, it's just, you know. So I can't even blame him in, with this one because I feel like he wanted what he wanted and he expressed it to the expect that I don't want a plus-size woman and they gave him a plus-size woman. So And he is um, doing the best that he can with the situation because now what is he going to do? He's already married. But, you know, why did they do that to Zutobile? That's the question I want to ask the experts. Why did they do that to Zutobile? So in addition to that, you guys, they are having challenges of intimacy with Zutobile because Zutobile says that with for her, sex is not a thing, you know? Like, you are in marriage, girl. Sex is a thing. <laughs> and sex is a thing in marriage. 
So, hmm. They have a situation where uh, Tommy, his complaint is that uh, they've only been intimate once. And when he tries to initiate, Zitobila will be like, you want to take it and please be fast because Ngiavu come in next scene. So it doesn't look like Uzitobile participates much in the deed and she just does it for the man and also uh, and she doesn't want to do it that much. So I don't know how this marriage is going to work, you guys. I don't know. So they, when they were playing a game, um, they uh, did talk about the intimacy thing because he was asking which is the best time and she said in the morning best time to do it in the morning and he says yeah of course we're gonna say in the morning because in the morning we don't have time we are rushing to go to work so what when are we gonna get a chance to do that okay and uh they also talk about the fact that Uzi Tobilo was saying her flaws one of her flaws is the fact that she cries very easily she was gonna try and control her emotions and guys Tammy doesn't think he has flaws Tammy Okay, so the way when they were playing the game, Zitobila had to be the one to point out what his flaws are because he just didn't think he has any flaws. This one, you guys, it will shock me if these people are still together. And if they are together, eh, because when the ladies were meeting, she did say uh, that they don't have emotional, uh, an emotional connection uh, with Utami. And she feels very much alone. And I think the other ladies were picking it up. We'll see she's not happy. And, uh, but she's not telling everything, you guys. Uh, now, the thing that uh, was interesting when the girls went out was that Kumo denies that he, she and Tabang have done the deed. And on the when with the men, because the men were also sharing, all of them have had, except for Tamil, who's only had once, and then Utabang says that he hasn't had it. I feel like it's a lie. I feel like it's a lie. But Itepo said, Listen, I speak to um I speak to Kumo on uh I guess they have their each other's numbers and she says that's not what she said when we were chatting but I'm not gonna uh, you know I'm not going to reveal what she says but what she says when you talk privately and what she says on camera is very different so I don't know why they're hiding it they're married you know it's part of the process they're married have they done it or not what's going on there or they did it it wasn't that good and it feels like to me like they said that it was their agreement that they were not going to bring it on uh, TV, that they've had intimacy. Okay. I don't know, you guys. It was clear from the meeting uh, of the ladies that Zitobila is not very happy and the others are not understanding, honestly, what the issues are. They're trying to talk to her so that they can see what's going on. But she does say, I think in one day session, she says, I didn't think it was going to be as difficult as it is. I'm like, what did you think? It's marriage. Anyway, you guys, uh, on the, with the guys, Sebenzila was actually the one that they picked up and even saved the wife as like a wallpaper on his phone. So maybe we are reading Boy Tepo and uh, Seventile wrong. Maybe they are the couple that is actually moving fast towards, you know. But anyway, my babies, uh, G and Kusu, are doing very well. And I'm very happy about that. And we are going to see you guys what happens in the next week. Because, of course, things are going to start um, getting serious. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much. For watching this video please like it before we go and share it with your friends with your family and even with strangers in the